one more reaction. This is uh, kind of a weird one, and I don't know how much of this I'm going to actually um, require you guys to know. I want you to recognize the reagents and be able to convert a carboxylic acid into an amide, because I think this is an important reaction. It definitely is a very important reaction, especially if you're going into any kind of biochemistry. Uh, but the mechanism gets a lot, gets to be a lot. And so I don't know that we're going to really delve into the mechanism too much. What we will, we'll talk about why this is a hard reaction and how we solve it. Okay, so if you want to convert a car, I'm back here. If you want to convert a carboxylic acid to an amine, you can't just take carboxylic acid plus amine, whoops, and have them react together, right? That does not work. And the reason it doesn't work is that you have an amine, which is a good base, and a carboxylic acid, which is an acid. Right? That's right there in the name. And so what you would get out of this reaction is you would get a carboxylic acid that's no longer, is not very active as an electrophile because it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have any positive charge. In fact, it has the opposite as negative charge. And you'd have a nitrogen that's no longer a good nucleophile because its lone pair has been used up getting H plus off of the acid. And so if you get to the conjugate base and the conjugate acid here, then you're kind of stuck. These reactions don't work. And so we can't just say, in all these other cases, we just use the means to convert esters to amides, to convert anhydrides to amides, and to convert acid chlorides to amides. We just threw an amine at it. And because the amine is such a bad leaving group, we didn't have to worry about all of that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, the amine is also a base, and so it doesn't work with carboxylic acids. And so we have to once again do the same trick. We have to make a good leaving group out of a carboxylic acid so that when the nitrogen adds to it, we can lose the leaving group and not, um, and not have to do that. Now, you can make the acid chloride and then react it with an amine to make the amide. That's very common. A lot of people do that, um, but there are other options, and so we should talk about that too. Okay. So how do we get around that? We use something called DCC. There are a million other reactions, there are reactants that do this, but this is the one that we're going to talk about. Dicyclohexyl diimide. Oh, darn it. I left out the second C. Carbodiamide. Right, you can see why we abbreviated it. Dicyclohexyl carbodiamide. And it's a compound that looks like this. You have a carbon that has two double bonds to N, and then each of those is connected to a cyclohexyl group. Looks complicated, right? This carbon is very electrophilic. It's got two, um, two pi bonds that it can break and all that kind of stuff, which is a good thing. And so this is what's useful is when a carboxylic acid reacts with it, We attack the carbon and we do that. Right, so now what's going to happen, I'm going to cheat a little bit and do two steps at once. What's going to happen is we're going to end up with this carbonyl there. Right? And I've moved a hydrogen from this oxygen up to this nitrogen, so everything stays neutral. And of course, what we've done again is we've made a good leaving group. So this whole compound up here is once again a good leaving group. And notice that we no longer have any acidic hydrogens. And so now, if we react the DCC with the carbonyl and then bring, or carboxylic acid, and then bring in our amine, we have no problems. This nitrogen can add here. Right? We can break the carbon oxygen pi bond and push the electrons up onto the oxygen. And now, once we have our leaving group in place, the problem with DCC is it takes forever to draw. Once we have our leaving group in place, when this recollapses, the, the best leaving group is going to be this one up here. And so we're going to do this. Okay. We're going to have that whole thing leave, and we end up with our amide coming out. So this is not a hard reaction to do. 
the mechanism is a little bit tricky because I've, I've kind of left out a, a bunch of hydrogen transfers and stuff in there. And the reason I've done that is because I'm not going to ask you to reproduce this mechanism. What I want you to know is that this follows the general trend. Why is DCC an effective coupling agent to make amides out of carboxylic acids? It's an effective uh, coupling agent because it makes a good leaving group that when the nitrogen attacks, that leaving group can leave and we can substitute this whole mess of stuff with the nitrogen, right? So if we go all the way back to our standard um, carbonyl substitution reaction, which I kept, right, which is right here, we're just making, so we can add new things to X here, right? So the other things that X could be are things like the thionyl chloride uh, in a uh, leaving group, right? Which is a really good leaving group. Or we could have the, um, the DCC leaving group here, right? So these leaving groups, right? We keep kind of making more and more good leaving groups. The important thing is that these are good leaving groups and we recognize that and we know that when we add DCC to this process, that allows this reaction to take place. If you do this reaction without DCC, it will be counted wrong, right? If you just add an amine and a carboxylic acid together, you're gonna to do this acid-base reaction that we have at the top. You need to have DCC in there because you need to have a good leaving group and you need to have the nitrogen able to attack the carbonyl and then lose the leaving group to get to the final. Okay, that's a lot of reactions, right? So if we look at our, our waterfall diagram now, we've got, I don't know, at least eight or nine reactions on this thing. But they're all the same type of reaction. They're all carbonyl substitution reactions, right? Where we have a nucleophile, we have a leaving group, the nucleophile adds to the carbonyl, we, we break the pi bond, and then we reform the carbonyl and kick out the best leaving group available. So if we can find that best leaving group, then we know what's going to happen. We know what's going to um, we know what's going to be substituted, right? And so that's the key to, to making sense of these carbonyl substitution reactions. So that's at least an introduction to all of this. There's plenty of worksheets and uh, problem sets and all that other kind of stuff for you to practice these kinds of things. As you have questions, make sure that you're getting them answered. Bring them to office hours. Ask me questions in class and all that other good stuff. Um, if you have, uh, I think that's it. I don't think there's any more videos from this chapter. So I think that we've more or less finished chapter 18 at this point. I'm going to go open the textbook and look and make sure. But I think we've covered everything that we need to cover. And so uh, make sure you're familiar with these videos and I will see you again soon, I'm sure.